welcome to the patch 13.11 patch notes. The most important patch notes of your entire life. No other patch notes have ever been more important than this, because these are the newest ones that now affect the game. What is in patch 11, sorry, 13.11? We have Nerfs to Aurelian Soul, Amumu, Aphelios, and Jinx, and uh, surprisingly lacking Kogma. Buffs to Akali, Azir, Ivern, Callista, Rik'Sai, Renekton, Twisted Fate. Rel has gotten a complete rework. System adjustments to a bunch of items. The new DRX skins are in. Wow. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to go through the Rel mid scope. I might. Okay. I'm going to be dead honest with you. I might actually make a video. This time for real. Okay. I'm. Okay. To be completely blunt with you guys. If you actually want that, the thing is, every time I've done Rel content, anything related to Rel, you guys literally just <laughs> destroy your computer. You just see the word Rel on screen and you smash your computer and break it because you just cannot stand Rel. So I've just avoided doing any Rel content because like, anytime I do Rel, nobody wants to watch because it's Rel. Okay? So leave a like, leave a comment, leave something if you want me to actually go over this. Akali is being buffed. Her Q damage is going up by 10. Because, you know, assassins weren't overpowered enough. Yep. Amumu is getting nerfed. Um, because he's getting nerfed. So wait, what is this? His W despaired the damage per tick per 0.5 seconds. Wait, what? So the every 0.5 seconds, he's losing 3 damage. Okay. So this should nerf his jungle clearing and a little bit of his skirmishing. Not that big a deal. Uh, I think he's doing really, 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 really good. But, you know, whatever. Aphelios is getting the smallest nerf. Uh, after Jinx, amazing, perfect nerf where they removed 4 damage. They realized that removing 4 damage from an ADC might be going too far. So Aphelios is only losing 3 damage. Despite being monstrously overtuned. And the new items kind of breaking him even further. Aurelian Soul shows up in his weekly nerf. Every week, Aurelian Soul gets nerfed, and this week, Aurelian Soul is getting nerfed again, as always. He's always getting nerfed. Could they actually nerf him? No. But this time, his singularity mana cost will go up, and the amount of damage his singularity does per tick will lose some AP ratio. So Aurelian Soul will scale a little bit worse. Okay, here's a problem. I can actually tell you what happened. Um, he has infinite scaling percent health damage, right? So his Q, when it hits you, does percent health damage. Now that scales up indefinitely. The problem here is with Force of Nature, tanks could kind of try to survive it and kind of get through it. Now with Force of Nature being effectively nerfed so hard, it has been removed from the game. Um, Aurelian Soul is now destroying everyone who tries to build defensively. So there's, there's nothing you can do. His Q will kill you in like three seconds. Um, it's kind of a big deal. It's very frustrating. I, I just hate this champion right now. So there you go. I mean, that's what they're doing. So yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, what else have we got here? We have uh, Azir being nerfed again. Uh, wait, really? No, buffed. Sorry, I'm, I just see Azir and I think he's being nerfed. <laughs> I literally just assumed he was getting nerfed. Okay. Um, so his Q cooldown early game is going down. So instead of 14 to 6, it's 12 to 6. Then his Arise is getting more summon range. And they're undoing the AP ratio nerf. The AP ratio nerf was literally the only thing they have ever done on Azir that helped balance the champion. With Force of Nature being removed and now getting more AP ratio on his W, will this make Azir overpowered? Yeah, probably. Pro probably, yeah. Actually, probably 100%. Um, it happens every time. It happens every time. So, next time I see Azir and assume he's getting nerfed, uh, it will likely be true. Because, yeah. Ivern's getting buffed. Uh, okay, so they're actually doing a bunch with Ivern. Let me read through here. Okay, so basically... They're adding buff sharing into the game by default. That's how Ivern can like share his red buff and give two red buffs. Um, they're adding that into the game by default. So uh, Ivern's going to need to be big buffed because that was like a big aspect of him. Um, yeah. 
With buff sharing becoming a part of the game this patch, he wanted to offer Ivern some buffs to the rest of his kit in exchange for removing his unique mechanic. Overall, these changes shouldn't be too much transformative, but his base spell should feel better in almost every situation they're cast in. Ivern's Q will be able to reach between most camps on both sides of the map, and Daisy should feel a lot more responsive with faster attacks and move speed. If you're going through the change list, you'll quickly realize that this isn't the mid-scope we pushed for with Ivern. The reason we decided to not give Ivern a mid-scope this patch is because player feedback around a proposed mid-scope was indicating we were on the wrong track. And internally, we just didn't feel that the designs were hitting the quality bar to ship. So for now, we're offering Ivern some buffs that will help him be a healthier tree until he's ready for transplant. Okay. Basically, um, they were trying to do an Ivern mid-scope, but it was really bad. And all seven Ivern players came out and said they didn't like it. And Riot, not wanting to, you know, turn against these seven remaining Ivern players, decided that maybe it wouldn't be in their best interests to uh, give him that rework. So now they're doing a mini rework here. So basically, um, Ivern's Q now gets 50 bonus range. Uh, Ivern can now press Q a second time to jump to them in addition to auto attacking. Um... Non epic change, its Q cooldown is now reduced. So, when you use it on a non epic monster, meaning a jungle monster, you get 50% of its cooldown back. That seems really good because that's going to allow him to jump through the jungle a lot. Hmm, not sure about that one to be honest with you. Um, let's see here. Uh, he gets the bonus magic damage on hit for three seconds, now applies to allied champions, and allies get five to 15 plus 10% of his AP on hit. And the brush spawn vision duration went from three to eight. And the brush duration has gone from 30 seconds to 45 until your team loses vision of them. Hmm. Uh, then auto attacks that you initiate with brush maker now have a special visual to show that you're getting it on hit. Okay. His E, if, you know, I'm going through so much for Ivern and like, to be honest with you, there's like two Ivern players left in the world. And you'll likely never actually see Ivern. So to be honest, I'm kind of just like, <laughs> like, why am I even going through all of this? None, none of you guys even play Ivern. So like, no one, no one's okay. But whatever. If when the shield detonates, or no enemies are hit by the detonation, and the shield has not been broken, the duration of the shield is renewed. Huh? So, if you don't hit an enemy with your shield, the shield just renews its duration. That seems extremely abusive. Surely that doesn't just go infinite. Surely not. Right? Does it go on cooldown? I'm assuming it still goes on. So, you can just shield yourself, run up, get it renewed... Then a melee champion fights you or something. Then you hit them. Then you just immediately shield yourself again. Okay. Daisy now has base health regen. Her movement speed is up. Her attack speed is up. Her attack range is up. Her attack speed per rank of the ability is down. That should still be overall more attack speed though. And then... It now gets 40 to 80 bonus damage on the slam. Okay, I'm going to be honest. These are a lot of buffs. So they're compensating for the fact that sometimes you would have an extra red buff. I feel like these buffs are worth way more than sometimes having an extra red buff. Like, these are a lot, particularly giving allies on hit for three seconds if they're ever in a brush. That feels rather substantial. Not in, like, the, oh my god, it will literally change the game kind of way. But, like, you know, adding even, like, 100, 200 magic damage throughout a fight, that's going to add up. With all these other buffs, I feel like that's going to add up. And I feel like this will go too far. Okay. Jinx attack speed growth from 1.36 to 1. Uh. The 
Don't worry, guys. In addition to the uh, four damage nerf, she's now also going to get a 7% attack speed reduction. So, uh... <laughs> four damage and 7% attack speed. Yep. Okay. Callista. Oh boy, this is a lot of buffs that I did not see. Oh no. Base health up, health regen up, health regen growth up, attack damage down by five. Oh no. They're reducing her attack speed, but now she now does 100% damage on her auto attacks. For those of you who didn't know, Callista was nerfed a long time ago to only do 90% damage on her basic attacks to significantly reduce her base damage. So not her base damage, her scaling damage, so that she couldn't scale that well compared to other AD carries. So they're returning her to the 100% damage, so she scales as well as everyone else. For those of you who don't know, this is a bad idea. Like, her win rate better be like 42% to justify this. It's only 45%. Uh, this is a bad idea. Calista's basic attack no longer miss if a target leaves vision. Yeah, that's probably fine. Um, her Q damage now is a higher AD ratio. Her rend now is an 8 second cooldown at all ranks. She now gets bonus AD on each stack. Does Riot understand what they're doing? Fundamentally? Do they understand what they're doing? Boy, Riot Freak, you, uh, you really, you, oh boy. You know what? I'm not even going to say anything, so that's what they're doing, chat. You guys likely won't experience this. The vast majority of you will never be good enough for Callista is a problem. I'm going to go play Diablo 4 tomorrow, so screw you all. I'm going to a different game. Rek'Sai is being um, buffed, obviously. The uh, Tremor Sense is now going to refresh every one second from every 1.5 seconds. Um, the heal is... Oh, okay. Her heal is now going to heal max HP. That's good. When they nerfed Rek'Sai's heal way back in the day to effectively be nothing, that was really bad because it meant that, like, Rek'Sai couldn't top lane anymore, which, okay, I think Rek'Sai should be a top laner. Actually, like, like in all honesty, I feel like her tunnels make more sense as a top laner. That's just me, right? So she couldn't top lane anymore. It also killed her ability to do anything other than be a Giga one-shot. When Rek'Sai could kind of back off for a little bit and heal, Mid fight after like bursting people, I felt like that was just better for game balance. You know? Hi, kitty. Um, her Q cooldown's going from four to four to two. Huh. Huh. Uh, hold on here. I, I need a. I I need to like refresh my memory here for a second, Kitty. So it's just the buff is the reveal, right? Wait, no, the buff duration is from five seconds to three. What is the buff? Oh, oh my God! They're talking about okay. That's if you, okay, 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 okay. I'm an idiot. That's basically how long you can hold the ability before it starts going on cooldown. The buff duration going from 5 seconds to 3 seconds means if you unburrow, shoom, attack. 
zoom attack. Then they like flash away. Instead of it sitting on you for five seconds before it goes off, like before you lose it and then it starts going on the cooldown, it'll be three seconds. That's good because that means you can get back to another queue um, in a reasonable amount of time. That's actually a good change. Yeah. The cooldown going to two is a bit sketchy. I won't lie to you. I'm not quite sure. That's where she goes, shoom, 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 right? Yeah, okay. Um, Queen's Wrath reveal duration going to five seconds from 2.5. Not really a big deal. And then... Targeted range increased to match untargeted range. Okay, that, that's just a bug fix. It's not a very big deal, actually, at all. Um, Renekton. Finally, we got to Renekton. Sorry, we kind of lost the uh, momentum here because I had to stop and read a lot of these uh, a bit too much. Normally, I give these patch notes like a twice over because I want to make sure I know what I'm talking about. But some of these are kind of like taking me by surprise as I like reread them and I'm like, oh, okay. Renekton is slice and dice is going from an 18 to 4 second cooldown to a 16 to 12. So Renekton will do uh, more damage. Not more damage, more mobility. Right. They're trying to compensate for the fact he doesn't have prowlers for mobility anymore. So they're giving him slice and dice on a uh, lower cooldown so that he can be more mobile. I'm not sure about reducing its rank 1 cooldown, truth be told. That's probably a really big buff for his laning phase. Uh, his ultimate is also getting a rather substantial buff. Um, the cooldown's going from 120 to 120 to 80. Now, that's needed to happen for like 50 years. The problem is, Ride put so much power into Renekton's ultimate that he can only ult every two minutes, but the issue was he needed his ultimate to be relevant after the early game. So, yeah. The damage on his ult has also been adjusted. Instead of 25 to 75 damage, it now does 30 to 90. I'm gonna be blunt. I think that one might be going a bit too far, especially the rank 1 ultimate getting its damage buffed. If you guys remember, Renekton was already, uh... You know, he was already pretty good early game. So making him better early game is, uh... Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Twist of Eight's getting a revert to that nerf they did a while back. I never really understood why they did this one. So basically, his gold card had an 8 to 6 second cooldown. Um, now it's going to be a 6 second cooldown again. So you'll be able to do other stuff, finally. Okay. Arden Center is being nerfed. Instead of 15 to 30% attack speed, it'll be 20%. By the way, this, this means uh, Twist of Eight can max his, um, potentially, I'm not saying he will, but he can potentially do, like, maxing his Q into maxing then his auto attack ability second. He's also going to be stronger early game. I'm not saying they will, but that was something that people were, people were experimenting with that, and yeah. So, Renekton buff, big buff on Renekton, actually. This one's a bit scary, I won't lie to you. Arden Sensor nerf 15 to 30% down to 20%. Dusk Blade, the execute damage got buffed. Really hard. Dusk Blade has been nerfed, sorry, buffed extremely hard. Um, the healing on Echo Zahelia has gone down. The damage on Echo Zahelia has gone down. Shockingly, having Banner of Command and Echo Zahelia meant that. Uh, not Banner of Command. You know the one I'm talking about. The other support item. Stacking those two were broken. Shockingly. I know. I'm shocked by it. Yeah, Mandate. Um, shockingly, stacking Mandate and Echoes, as everyone suspected, was overpowered. Literally 100% of people said it would be overpowered. Then it was overpowered. That's crazy. That's crazy. Um, they're also making it scale a bit later, looks like. Yeah, so it will heal less, and you'll need to get later into the game because it's, it's yeah, 
Blah, blah, blah. The scaling starts at level six instead of level one. So remember, it was a nerf, yes, a nerf to bot lane to make support and AD carry overpowered. By making both of them overpowered, bot lane somehow got weaker last patch. Didn't you know? Um, Gale Force is nerfed really hard. Um, execution damage down, crit scaling down. Gale Force was way too overpowered. It was because of the movement speed. I don't know why they're nerfing the execute damage. The execute damage was reasonably fine. It was the fact that you could get an early 7% movement speed and you could get a gap closer and you could get good damage. That was what made it overpowered. Kraken Slayer is getting giga buffed because on hit builds were extremely overpowered and dominating the game. So they decided to buff them because they're incompetent as fuck and have no idea what they're doing anymore. Because champions all have more armor than magic resist. Could that be? Possibly because all MR items are fucking terrible? No, seriously, when I looked this up the other day to check if Spirit Visage Aatrox was viable again, Spirit Visage has a worse win rate than basically any other item. If you are playing into a magic damage team, we are back to the point, unironically, where it's better to just go with hysteric gauge than to go with a spirit visage. I shit you not. It's still better to go with Maw as well, but then Maw being nerfed at 2.5 seconds duration doesn't tend to help you that much into on hit builds, which tend to just poke it active and then, you know. So magic resist is dead. There's, there's no magic resist items that are good. So what they're doing is they're changing Kraken Slayer to be physical damage from magic but, what? What? Because more of its damage is coming from base damage, low AD builds like Rage Blade on hit builds are even more buffed here, where the item is severely underperforming. Jesse, what the fuck are you talking about? So, they change it from master to physical, Buffed its damage from 20 to 35 to 85. Buffed its damage scaling from 60% AD to 65% AD. Buffed its AP scaling from 45% to 60%. Okay, I'm gonna be blunt with you, Riot. Are you fucking stupid? Okay, I've been rereading this and mathing this out in my head. How much fucking armor do you think I have? <laughs> The only way, okay, the only single way that this ends up being a nerf is if you're fighting a champion that's gone plated steel caps, death cap, not death cap, um, um, death stance, and then like, I don't even know. You would have to fight a champion who literally did not build magic resist. Now, as a serious question to you, Riot, if there are so many champions in the game who never build magic resist, you never build magic resist on a tank or a bruiser. Isn't that a goddamn problem? That magic resist is so goddamn useless that you're changing an item from magic to physical damage is, and, and then you're like, it does three times the damage now, but it's physical instead of magic. So it's like a huge nerve. Dude, I, I, I'm, I'm sometimes like, I, I, okay, I don't have the time, chat, I don't have the time, okay, I don't have the time, but I swear to you, I promise you, if I took the time to math this out, I can almost promise that this is going to be a buff, I can almost promise you, okay, I, I, I don't know what they're doing, man, I, I'm, I'm at a loss anymore, anyway, Moonstone Renewer is getting, uh, buffed, huh, Moonstone Renewing is getting buffed. That's fair. I, I never really even saw that item. Quick question, right? 
do you know about Lord Dominic's regards and Rageblade Mythic passive? Because Lord Dominic's regards removes 35% of your armor and Rageblade gives up to 20% armor pen. So, do you guys know that, Riot? I, just serious question. Okay, Moonstone Renewer is getting buffed. Novari Quick Blades is getting buffed. Ability Haste down. Cooldown reduction by auto attacking up. The 5 Ability Haste to 5 attack damage and the attack damage up. They also changed the recipe. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, Novari Quick Blades kind of sucks. I'll be real. But it's not even that Novari Quick Blades sucks. It's that um, uh, Gale Force is way too overpowered. That seems to be the fundamental issue. Gale Force is really, really overpowered, which means that Novari Quick Blades is underpowered. Okay, Runon's Hurricane. Wow, shockingly, 30 on hit magic damage and buffing its damage made it overpowered. That's crazy. That's crazy. Who knew? Who knew an AoE item being one of the best single target damage items in the game what might be maybe a bit overtuned? Who knew? How could anyone have predicted this? Oh, darn it. Oh, man. What a bad luck for Riot. Static Shiv is getting buffed because it was horribly, horribly underpowered. Um, The damage of mini modifier is up and the damage is up by 10. Wait, that's it? Huh. I mean, I don't feel bad for AD carries. Fuck them, right? Like... But I don't think Static Shiv will be good even with that buff. Uh, I mean, it might be okay. For the champions that were, like, really good with it, maybe they'll be able to use it. But, like, all the people who want to go, like, Static Shiv Yasuo again, this is not going to affect Static Shiv Yasuo. It's still going to be terrible. Uh, Storm is losing 5 damage. And then the uh, damage on the on hit is going down. Uh, yeah, okay, so I was wrong about Stormraiser. I'm willing to admit it. I thought Stormraiser wasn't gonna be that good. Like, I thought it would be okay. It ended up coming way better, uh, particularly on Jin. Hitting for three, four hundred magic damage on your attacks late game proved to be really goddamn strong. And having nearly 50% movement speed early game was really goddamn strong. And having like an additional 100 magic damage burst early game was really goddamn strong. So, uh, Storm Racer is getting nerfed a little bit. This is one of those times where I didn't take the time to math something out in my head. Like, I didn't personally math it out. And because I didn't, the item was way better than I thought it was going to be. That's probably on me at this point. Yoma's Ghost Blade is losing some ability haste and the lethality is going down. And the stacks generate slower. <laughs> okay, where you have less abilities doing less damage and it'll take longer to stack up. Like, okay, yeah, maybe you launched it a little bit overpowered, right? Like, literally everyone said! Literally everyone! Buff sharing is being added into the game. This is actually really substantial. Okay, so, um, basically, uh, um, you'll be able to share buffs. Ivern's mechanic is being added to the jungle entirely. So the jungle is getting buffed. I don't even have, I, I literally, guys, I'm going to go play Diablo tomorrow. I'm going to go play Diablo 4 tomorrow. Uh, that's it. They're adding Ivern's buff sharing to every jungler. To buff the jungler. Yeah. I shit you not. I have nothing to say. I literally... I, I have no comment. No comment. No comment. Uh, bug fixes. Okay, someone... Uh, this is why I need to read through this stuff before I make the video. Because, okay. Someone said they were bug fixes for Aatrox. Uh, fix tension at wit's end. Co total cost being 100 more gold than intended. Oh, so wit's end gold cost is going down by 100. That's interesting. Um, fix the bug with Draven's Q spinning axes. Critical strikes would do less damage if the attack was launched immediately after catching an axe. Interesting. Don't know how that happens. 
Um, fixed a bug where Ivern's passive was sometimes dropped two buff wisps instead of one. Interesting. Fixed a bug where Frozen Heart would sometimes generate monster aggro. It's cold! Okay? The monsters were cold. They were defending themselves. Um... Fixed a bug causing the announcer to not announce that turret players would be falling soon. Are you telling me that turret players were being killed? Because that sounds like a very good addition to the game. In all honesty, if Riot is wiping out all the people who just spam attack turrets, that could be the change that League of Legends needs. Um, someone told me they had a bunch of bug fixes for Aatrox. I see literally no bug fixes. Those bastards lied to me. Uh, nothing, 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 nothing. Skins. All the skins are here. She's cute. Aatrox is weird. I'll be honest, I don't hate the direction. Did we choose a Akali again? Can a Akali go five seconds without getting a skin? Where, where? Where is the bug with Aatrox? Fixed a bug where Mecha and Lunar Eclipse Aatrox would return to and freeze an idle pose when in their recall. Fixed a bug where the Titan Blade Q3 VFX multiple Aatrox sent to render above the impassable terrain. How is that a big skin? Bug fix. How is that? How do I even give a shit about? No. Screw you guys. Then Aatrox got a prestige skin. Neat, I guess. DRX Aatrox. Y yeah, I guess. Why does every Aatrox skin have such low quality textures? It's like the textures I complain about. Like how low quality these are. Gwen's skirt has more pixels than all of this. Like, look at this. Like, what? What, what is this? Why? Then we look at a Akali. She's got her thigh shaded like seven different colors. See what I mean? Like, come on. Like, is... Uh, what? Eh. 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 Like, come on. Just look at the chest difference. Look at the quality difference. It's ridiculous. What? What is this? She's got like a whole fucking thing going on. What? What? Look at the difference! I'm not even. I'm not even complaining. I'm just pointing it out. It's ridiculous. At least Ash looks cute. I'm not really sure. It's. I mean, the Aatrox skin adds something new. A Kali is just. It, I. I wouldn't. Okay. It's just. Okay. Caitlyn. It's just Caitlyn. I mean, are we just, is this just a thigh high skin line? Can we put some goddamn thigh highs on Aatrox as well? Then DRX Kindred. Uh. It's unique. I don't hate it. It's very unique. I'm gonna be honest, it's very unique. I'm not sure what to make of it. I don't hate it. I, I like it for trying to do something different, right? Like, I like it for trying to do something different. I don't like it. I don't know why, I just don't like it. Okay. Um. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for being here. Special shout out to my Patreon members. Thank you guys. Uh, I can't actually read your names this week because I, I need to go do something really quick. I'm sorry. Um, but thank you to everyone who subscribes to my Patreon. I love you. I thank you. If you want to continue to support me, then, um, subscribe to my Patreon. It helps me out immensely. Thank you to all my YouTube members. Thank you to, uh, everyone who subscribes to me on Kick. Thank you to everyone who donates. Thank you to everyone who leaves comments. Thank you all. You're all great people. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. Um, and as always, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Goodbye, everybody.